Um, great. So this webinar is brought to you by Topcon Solution Stores. I'm your host, Vinny Stamato. Uh, I'd like to start out by acknowledging how precious everyone's time is and how I sincerely thank you all for joining me today uh, for this presentation. I assure you this will be time well spent. Uh, here at Topcon Solutions, we hear from many of our CAD users, what is Revit and why would I want to use it? So to answer that question, I put together this presentation to show you what Revit is and what it does. All right, uh, a little bit about me. I'm a software application specialist and an Autodesk certified instructor. I've worked in the field in vertical and horizontal construction for over 25 years. I've used Revit as a modeler, as a detailer, and now as a trainer. And I've always been uh, very inspired by this tool. From the very first time I opened up the tool, I thought, this is this is for me. Uh, really enjoy this. So about us, uh, Topcon Solutions, we are the retail arm of Topcon Positioning Systems. We are a platinum tier and award-winning Autodesk value added reseller, uh, a platinum level Bluebeam partner, and we have certified instructors on staff. We have retail stores throughout the Pacific Northwest, throughout the Midwest, and throughout the Northeast. And we offer state-of-the-art training with certified instructors currently offering online training with some in-person training. Uh, along with unparalleled technical support and service, just a phone call away, and at our brick and mortar locations to keep your software, hardware, and equipment humming right along. So today's agenda, I'll start out with an overview of Revit, what it is and how it works, uh, and then we'll go into an overview of the interface, how to start a model, I'll show you how to draw it in Revit, We'll talk about components in Revit, which are known as families. Uh, then we'll look at how to link Revit, CAD, and PDFs, uh, and how to export back to my screen. Um, all right, so let's get into this here. Um, I've got a lot of material. Uh, we'll, we'll have time for questions at the end, but we've got about a full hour of material, and I'm just really excited to show you all how this uh, how this fabulous piece of software works and what it can do for you. So what is Revit? Uh, so Revit is a 3D design tool that works as a design and documentation platform. It supports designs, drawings, schedules, and collaboration uh, required for building modeling information. Um, because Revit works with objects, which are known as elements or components in Revit, Revit is more like constructing a building uh, than actually drawing one. Uh, and Revit, used as a BIM tool, it delivers information about project design, scope, quantities, and phases right when you need it. So Revit, Revit actually stands for Revise Instantly. Uh, what does it do? One thing it does is it saves you time. By creating a 3D model from one parametric building database, which contains model geometry and intelligent metadata, components, annotations, views, all contain parameters, which are coordinated and maintained in the model's database. Plans, elevations, 3D views, and schedules are all byproducts of a Revit 3D model. They're created automatically and they're not drawn separately. This is one area where it saves you time. As you model in Revit, Information is collected about the entire building project and coordinated across all other representations of the model. So Revit's parametric change engine automatically coordinates changes made anywhere in the model at any time, whether on plans, elevations, 3D views, schedules, or sheets. So with Revit, you have the capability to make design changes instantly, support integrated multidisciplinary design, link architectural, structural, and MEP models, easily generate renderings of your design, and you could create detailed drawings with detail components that are actually overlaid on the model. What you see here in this detailed drawing 
are detail components. They're not actually drawn individually. These are actually little line components uh, that don't have model information, but they're just basic components that can be used to draw your, uh, your detailed drawings. Right there, it saves you a great deal of time. Uh, other things you could do with Revit, you could bring models uh, into a virtual reality environment. Uh, you could import uh, scanned data. Um, other things about Revit, you can collaborate on BIM 360. So in a work sharing environment, the model gets pushed to the cloud. The team can then divide the model into separate work sets, each representing their own discipline. And you could work on just your data in the model and share and collaborate changes in real time. So what we have here on the left is a model. We've got a structural model with individual work sets. Uh, the blue represents uh, a mechanical work set. The red represents an electrical work set and the yellow plumbing. And in the illustration just next to that, you see how we've turned off the other work sets. Just the plumbing work set is being uh, highlighted so if you're working on that particular work set, just your components are going to be highlighted and accessible and makes your drawing with collaboration a little bit, uh, little bit easier. Uh, other, other capabilities, um, you could discover design issues early on and use clash detection between disciplines. So here we have what's called an interference check. And this little box, open it up and we're checking uh, categories from the current project, and we're checking categories from a linked structural project. So in here, I'm just comparing air terminals uh, to structural framing. Uh, next slide over, it's showing me where, when I open this up, it's showing me all my clashes in this little frame. And you could see here where we've got structural framing and ductwork and a clash right here. A lot easier to, uh, deal with this in the design phase uh, before you get out into the field. And the nice thing about this little interference report is you can click on any one of these nodes and then click on this little ID number and it'll zoom you right in to that particular clash. Uh, so what is parametric modeling? So I mentioned uh, using a parametric uh, database. Uh, so parametric modeling, this refers to the relationship or parameters among elements and objects in Revit. Uh, a Revit model uh, is coordinated and the changes um, that happen in Revit are all done in this parametric modeling database where it just uh, accumulates all the parameters of all the different objects and uh, connects them all together in one, uh, in one database. So these relationships, uh, they're created automatically by the software, uh, or you can create your own parametric relationships between components. Uh, so the fundamental coordination and productivity benefits are known as bidirectional associativity. Uh, you could change anything, anywhere in a model, and Revit coordinates that change throughout the entire project and schedules. Uh, so Revit can be used for commercial, industrial, uh, architectural, interiors and exteriors, uh, structural design and load calculations, systems design and load calculations for mechanical, electrical and plumbing. Uh, it can be used for landscape design, energy analysis. So it's got quite a few capabilities. Uh, once you start using Revit, you're not gonna wanna go back to any of any other program that you've used. Um, all right, so let's take a look at Revit itself and let's start with taking a look at the home screen. So this here is the home screen for 2021. And what you see here uh, across the very top, first thing I'll point out is at the very top, it's telling me I'm in Revit 2021, at the very top of my screen. Since I'm currently logged in, my login information is over here on the top right. And then down the left side of my screen, I've got an area where I can open existing models, open new models from a template. Over here, I could open families. 
uh, and open a, a new family template. Um, down here, I could open up recent files. Here is my connection to DIM360 files. And then across the top here, these are all recent files that I have worked in. And by just double clicking on any one of these thumbnails, it'll open up this particular file. And if I scroll down, here are my family files. So families in Revit are components or objects if you use uh, other CAD softwares. Um, so here we've got uh, you know just some sample families. Uh, here's a, a sample trust family. You can open up one of these families, uh, use it in your model, or you can modify it to whatever requirements you need for your model. And then up here, there's our little question mark up at the top right of my screen. And if I hit that down arrow, I've got uh, a little help screen, uh, skills videos, additional resources, things of that nature, and then my about Revit uh, 2021. And this is gonna tell me right here, my, um, my version of my software, my year and my version of my software. And about every three to six months or so, we'll come out with a new version. And it's always good to update. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, at the Revit interface. So I am going to open up a new blank template. Oh, there it is. So usually when you go to open up a new project, you'll get this little dialog box, and in here are some basic Autodesk Revit. Uh, templates. Uh, inside each template has uh, a few sheets, uh, a few blank sheets, and some different uh, drawing views kind of preloaded. Um, and in other templates here, like the structural template, it'll have structural families, which are components preloaded. Uh, in here, architectural families are preloaded. Uh, and then under browse, this will take me to um, a server or to whatever folder where I can have other templates, say I've made my own or working at a company that has their own template files, uh, you could access those right from this new project. So we'll open this up. <clears throat> so here is our Revit for 2021 home screen. Each year they make a few slight adjustments and changes, uh, really like what they've got for 2021. So when you open the Revit screen, First thing you'll notice is you have this large drawing area. These are little elevation markers. Uh, these are basic exterior elevation markers <clears throat> in our drawing screen here. Up at the top, here is a tab, and it's just displaying that I've got level one open. And over here in my project browser, which is this box down here to the lower left, level one is in bold. And it's showing me that my level one is actually open. Uh, let's take a look at the ribbon. So across here, I've got my ribbon. Here I've got architectural uh, elements, objects, and components. Um, stairs, railing, and ramps. Tools for creating rooms. Uh, across the top here, I've got these other tabs. Uh, structural elements in here individual components for steel, <clears throat> components for precast. Under systems, uh, I've got over here HVAC, uh, mechanical equipment, plumbing and piping, electrical. Over here an in insert. Uh, once again, this is just a real brief looking at the ribbon. Uh, I could link Revit files. I could link uh, IFC, uh, Industry Foundation Class 3D files. Uh, link CAD files, I could link topos, I could link PDFs, I could import a PDF, lots of options and links, uh, and an insert. Across the very top of my screen, I've got my quick access toolbar. You could put tools up in here that you use uh, frequently. And with tools, <clears throat> over here, as you see, I'm hovering over this architecture wall tool. And right next to where it says wall, it's got this little WA in parentheses, and that's the shortcut key uh, that you would use for creating a wall. So with that, um, shortcut keys, uh, I'll type in KS, 
uh, for keyboard shortcuts. And you can create all kinds of keyboard shortcuts. Um, currently, there's a few in the default template, and you could create all your own keyboard shortcuts uh, right in this little dialog box here. And that does help speed up time. Um, down at the very bottom of the screen, these are different view display options. And then down here on the lower right are little uh, options for uh, selecting, uh, selecting elements or selecting objects by the face or not selecting them by the face. <clears throat> so lots of lots of options. Uh, let's see what else. So the properties palette. So that's right up here. So the properties palette and the browser, both of these can be undocked and placed on a separate monitor. <clears throat> and in most cases in production area, you would see both of these, the properties palette and the browser, um, docked on a separate screen and sometimes on a screen that's actually positioned vertically. Uh, because it, as you can see in the in the properties and in the browser, this can just go on and on and on. There's there could be endless amount of information in both of these areas. So the properties palette is where you can view and modify uh, various parameters that define properties of elements uh, in Revit, and it's divided into two areas. Up here is the type selector, and then down here is the uh, edit type. And in here are basic instance parameters. I'll show you an example of that. I'm going to grab a wall here, and I'm going to grab this particular wall. So as soon as I went into that wall command and selected a wall, select this particular wall, the properties of this wall are displayed here in the properties palette. So you could see it's showing us things like the level that it's going to be placed on, the height of the wall, uh, and then all kinds of other information, uh, area and volume of the wall. And with that, when I select an object, especially if I'm drawing a linear object like a wall, I get my uh, modify panel. It turns green, and then I could see all these modify tools right up here. These are my drawing tools over here. All right, and then a little bit about the browser. So as you're working in Revit, you'll find that you're working in a fully integrated model. Uh, basically, the browser allows you to work on different aspects of your project. So as you create views, they come in many varieties, 2D, 3D, uh, ceiling plan views, elevation views. As you create these different views with pretty much a single click, the project, man the project browser will actually manage and allow you to navigate to different views in your model. So you can see we've got different categories. There's basically three essential types of views. There's uh, uh, plan views, uh, ceiling plan views, and elevation views. These are the three main categories uh, of views. And another thing I wanna point out real quick, we have this little status bar down in the lower left, which is saying, since I'm in the wall command, it's saying click to enter a wall start point. So this little status bar is going to point me in the right direction, uh, depending on which command I've actually uh, chosen. All right. Um, so next let's talk briefly about datum elements. So when we're drawing, uh, a good place to start a project is to understand your datum elements. And there's three basic datum elements uh, that I'm gonna talk about here today. We've got uh, levels, grids, and reference planes. So I like to start with levels. So levels represent the floor levels in your building. They run parallel to the ground, and you see them at specific heights in your project. So over here in the browser, I've got two levels, and I've got a site plan. Uh, you could also have levels for grade, top of foundation, top of steel, roof, parapet, any meaningful uh, vertical location in your project can be marked by a level. Uh, and objects uh, in Revit, uh, such as floors, uh, walls and components, 
uh, in your model, they will be hosted or associated with a level. Next, we've got grids. Grids represent the location of the building's structural elements, uh, corners of the building, uh, wall locations, um, columns, structural elements. So the grids will help to identify and will host uh, things like structural elements, like um, uh, structural columns and such, and architectural columns as well. Grids run vertically through the entire building, uh, perpendicular to levels. They could also run at any angle in your plan. Uh, if your building is using columns, you'll typically place uh, grids to host the columns. And then we've got reference planes, and I'll show you an example of that here in just a moment. Uh, reference planes are like guidelines. You can use reference planes to mark any important point or a meaningful datum location in your project. Uh, one thing that's really neat is as you draw in, in 2D in Revit, a 3D view is created. So let's get started here after all that. Um, so here's my project and I'm just gonna draw basic four walls with a uh, residential style roof, put a couple of windows and doors on it. Um, first, I wanna go to my south elevation. And you can see here, I've got two levels. Floor plans show two levels. I wanna add a level. So I'm gonna come to my architecture tab and I'm gonna add a level with an offset of 10 feet. Now in Revit, I don't have to type feet and inches. I just clicked up here in this box and typed in 10. The first number I type is always gonna be feet. If I hit the space bar and then another number, that'll become my inches. So pretty easy there. Um, once again, saving time. And there's uh, another level. I'll escape out of that. I'm gonna rename this level roof. Now here it's asking me if I wanna rename corresponding views. So this is the bi-directional associativity. I created this roof level in a, in a uh, elevation plan, in my south elevation plan. And if I look, my floor plan now has a new level called roof and my ceiling plan also has a level called roof. So that's how the, uh, the model keeps track of itself and how things are all interconnected. So I'm gonna name this floor two and we'll name this guy floor one. All right, so I've got some levels. I'm gonna tile my screen here and come over to my floor plan and I'm gonna put in some grids to mark the corners of my buildings. There we go. So the windows tile is also really nice. I often like to have you know, a plan view or an elevation view open at the same time, a uh, section view or a, or a 3D view. We'll take a look at that here as we go. So here I just selected grid. And for grids, I'm just gonna place two grids right here horizontally. And you could see as I go to place the second grid, it's automatically giving me an alignment and it's telling me my distance. Uh, pretty nice little feature. Um, and again, here it's showing my alignment. It's snapping automatically to that alignment point. So arbitrarily, we're just gonna go with a 40 foot um, width there. And then I'm gonna put in a couple of grids in this orientation. Not necessarily concerned so much about the distance of them. Uh, this one here, it's showing up at 48 feet. But just to show you an example of how these tools work, I'm gonna change that to grid A and this to grid B. All right, so now you can see those grids are also being represented in my elevation plan. <laughs> So let's place some walls. I'll come over here to my wall, architectural. I'm gonna select basic wall brick. 
on CMU. And you can see when I click in this type selector, these are all the preloaded default wall types in this architectural template that we opened. Um, so I'm gonna set the base to floor one, and I'm gonna make my top go up to my roof level. And I'm gonna draw these in, and I wanna place this wall at the finished face exterior. And I have what's called the chain command on, so I can continue to draw these walls all in one action. And as you see, I just drew it here on the right side in my plan and over here in my elevation, you can see the walls. I'm gonna give it some color. If I zoom in on that, you can see that's a brick wall. And let's open up a 3D view. And here's our 3D view, tile these guys. So now I could see my model as I'm drawing. All right, let's add a floor. Oh, back to the architecture tab. All my uh, different elements up here, I'm gonna select floor, different floor types preloaded. And I'm just gonna choose a, um, you know, uh, all kinds of options in here for now. I'm just gonna choose a generic 12 inch, uh, but you can see I've got some default options in here. I could take one of these uh, one of these floors and create a different floor uh, just by duplicating a type and creating a different floor with uh, different attributes. And I'm gonna place a floor here. So again, as I'm placing this floor, in my 2D plan view, over here in my 3D view, it's actually showing up. It's being populated at the same time. And I'll hit the green check. There's my floor on my down here on my first floor. And you can see that same floor over here in the elevation view. It's highlighted in red. In Revit, when you select a component uh, in one view, it highlights in all the views because the model is basically one complete you know, object. All right, let's put this on the second floor. So I'm gonna come over here to my copy to clipboard and then I'm gonna paste it to floor two. So there we go. Now I've got two floors. Pretty quick. And I just removed this wall on the side just so you could look in and see that. All right, so we've got a couple of floors. Um, let's go ahead and add a roof. So I am going to open up uh, my structural plans, my roof plan. Uh, so what it's showing is the very top edges of my walls, but I'm on my roof, uh, in my roof plan. So I'm gonna come back to architecture and roof by footprint. Lots of options for roof. This particular one I'm gonna show you is just gonna be uh, by footprint. Um, I'm gonna have a slope right over here to find slope. I'm gonna have a slope on three sides and then one side is just gonna be a, uh, a gable end. Over here, I'm gonna give myself a two foot overhang. Just type in two and that's gonna give you that overhang. And I'm gonna use the pick walls tool. So again, these are my drawing tools that show up. Uh, these are all my editing tools that are showing up. And in this case, since I'm drawing a roof as with floors, I'll get this little finish or cancel. So I'll have to hit the green check when I'm done. So you could see as I place this roof, it's showing up in a defaulted 912 uh, pitch. And we'll take a peek at that here in a second. I turned off defined slope, and this over here is not gonna have a slope. So I'll have a hip roof out here, and then just the gable end over here. And now if I click on any one of these segments, 
there we go. I could come in and edit that. Say I want to change it to a 712. I could change it to any pitch I would like. Um, I could also do a completely flat roof. In that case, I wouldn't use this particular, I would use this tool, but I would uh, turn off my defined slope. So there, I just changed my pitch. And you could see this roof over here in both of these other views. And I'm going to hit the green check mark. And there's my roof. All right, so we've got a few walls, we've got a roof. Over here in my visual styles, give it some color. Um, this here is my detail level. I'm going to turn my detail level to medium. It's not showing much detail level in this, but in the floor plan view, you will see some better detail level. Let's take a look here. Uh, windows tile. So here's my roof plan. Here is my floor plan. So let's take a look at detail level. If I turn on my detail level in my floor plan, I could zoom in and see I've got hatching, got my brick, I've got my air gap. Or I could go to course, which isn't going to show that detail level. And then I could also add color to that. So this is just a view um, that we're playing with and modifying. So if I come down here to my 3D views, this 3D right here in brackets is this particular 3D view that I created. Uh, let's take a look at some other options. Uh, view range. So in this roof plan, we're looking down right at the very top edge uh, of this of this uh, roof system, and we're seeing it's being cut. It's being cut right at about, um, looks like it's being cut at one foot. So I just opened up my view range dialog box. And if I hit that show, this right here is showing me the, the different range of my different view settings. So for my top range, I'm going to open this guy up to 20 feet. And then my cut plane, I'll set to 19 feet. And I'll hit apply. And I could keep this box open. And you could see that that roof now, since I adjusted my view range, you could see the entire roof. I adjusted the view range, but it's only going to adjust the view range for this particular view. So the properties of these views are all independent. Uh, basically, the, the graphic properties of these views are independent of one another. All right. So another interesting thing here in Revit. So if I click this exterior wall, right away you could see it's going to show me temporary dimensions. With little control points, I can move those dimensions. And I get these little arrows. I could grab this wall, move it up, right? Um, now say I want this wall to be, uh, I just want it to be right in line with this, uh, with this gable end. If I select the wall and then I come up here to attach and then select my roof, it's gonna snap it right there. It might save a little bit of time, folks. All right. Uh, so let's see, we've got some views. I'm going to turn off my roof view. So what I've done here is I've done what's called a Windows tile. As I've opened up different views, I've tiled my views. And then I could untile the views by just closing off any of these tabs. Uh, let's see. So let's add a couple components. And once again, I know I'm going through this pretty quick, but um, you'll be able to view this um, after we're done. And uh, I've got some great info coming up, so I'm just trying to get it all, a lot of info packed into a short period of time. Uh, so uh, doors, I'm gonna click on the door command. So right here, I've got my door command. And right here, my type selector, 
these are the door types that are loaded in this model. I don't necessarily like these at this point. So what I am going to do is come over here to what's called load family. And once again, doors are called a family. So each door is its own family. So this is the single flush uh, 36 by 84 door family. So I'm gonna click load family. And this brings me to this pretty thorough library of components. You can see here I've got annotations, uh, electrical, uh, millwork, you know, columns, electrical down here, lighting, um, structural, title blocks and windows. So I'm gonna come to my doors library and I am gonna grab a residential, let's see, this one looks pretty nice. So as I scroll through this library, you see the little thumbnail of the component that you're choosing. Now, these are just the default Revit components. Uh, you could create other components in the family editor. Uh, you could uh, copy components from other models. You could download components. I'd be careful about that. I would do some research before you downloaded components um, off uh, some internet site. Uh, just do some research on that. There are, um, there's, a, there's a lot to it. The components basically have data in them. And if you download a component uh, from the internet, depending on how it's built, it can have a lot of data associated with it and bulk up your model uh, where you really don't need all that extra data. Uh, and I'll show you that here in just a moment. So I'll open that. Uh, we'll choose a 3.0 by seven foot. It'll think, and now if you look at my cursor down here in the lower right, it's got this little do not enter symbol. Uh, that basically is telling me that I can't place the component. The component's in my cursor. Uh, over here in the type selector, the component is actually selected and active. And what it wants me to do is hover it over this wall. Doors and windows need to be hosted uh, to walls. So again, as soon as I place that component, shows up in the other views. And this particular uh, this particular door, if I come over here to edit type, these are the properties that are with this door. Not a lot of properties. Um, some dimensional properties, some analytical properties, but not a whole lot, right? So as the properties in this particular door fills up, um, it creates more data and it just makes the object that much more heavier uh, data wise. Um, you can add data to this particular door. You could put in cost. I could add fire rating to this door and things like that. That information is going to show up on your schedule. And if you want that information, great. Um, it all depends on how you uh, set it up. You know, the data you put in is the data that you'll get out. So all this information here will show up on your schedule and you could add information if you've got special requirements or a component with some uh, special properties. Um, you could add that and have that show up in a schedule as well. So there's a door for you. Uh, let's go to window. Here's my type selector. This will make a little easier. And you could see as I hover, I get the little um, thumbnail. Here I'll pick a 57 by 72, and I'm going to place these in my. Um, I'm going to place these over here, in my elevation view. So as I'm hovering here in the elevation view, you could see I've got my temporary dimensions. So let's just say I'll go seven feet. You know, once again, this is just for um, demonstration purposes. I'll pop another window here. I could change the dimensions of these windows or the locations where they're at. But for now, demonstration purposes, I just wanted to place a few windows. And again, placing windows in one view, they show up in all the other views. Uh, I could select one window, right click, uh, select all instances in view. Got all these guys, gonna go ahead, copy them to clipboard and paste to selected levels. 
So once again, this is just some real rudimentary modeling things that Revit will do for you. Um, let's say, you know what, I don't like this window up here. I am going to select each one of these guys uh, in this uh, 3D view. And now say I want to change these to, um, to casements, um, actually to double hung. Let's do double hung. Just want a different window there. So once again, placing components and changing them on the fly, saving you time, um, pretty neat. All right, uh, let's see here. Let's take a look at another model. Um, I'm gonna leave my floor plan open. And I wanna show you guys a different model. So this is just sort of like where you start, right? Grid lines, levels, walls, roofs, floors, some components, and on and on. Uh, changing things like walls and, and components pretty quick. Um, let's change these walls, right? So I'm gonna select one of these exterior walls. No, not the roof. There's the wall. I'm gonna come to my type selector. Actually, I'm gonna select the wall, right click, select all in view. And then I'll come over to my edit type. And I'm gonna change it to this wall type. And it pauses for a moment. And now you can see that wall type has changed just that quickly. All right, I'll close this down. So I wanna show um, another example of a, um, uh, of a Revit project. And what I wanna show you here is things like, um, like, like here, just the, the renderings. Okay, so these are rendered in Revit. That's pretty nice, uh, you know, almost photorealistic. You could see leaves on the trees. You've got uh, shadows, you know, you've got, um, settings for your lighting. Um, here's another one, you know, pretty good renderings. Uh, let's take a look at our browser. So as you start to model, your browser is gonna fill up. And this is an example of a rather small browser. Okay, not a lot of views, but each time, like here I've got renderings, each time you create a view, um, it's gonna show up here in the browser. Down here, I've got my sheets. Each time you create a sheet, that sheet will populate down here. Um, let's see, you can, gosh, we're, we're running a little tight on time. So let's see, where can I go from here? Um, renderings, let's take a look at a camera view. Uh, so I'm gonna open up my level one floor plan. Now here's another way you can make a view. I'm gonna grab my little Instamatic here, camera, place it in the model and draw it out. So now what I've created is this 3D perspective view with that camera tool. And as soon as I create that view over here in bold, it shows that it's now populated in my 3D views. Add a little color. Kind of neat. So from that camera view, let's say um, I want to put this on a sheet. I'll open up a new sheet here, and I'll come over to here. My 3D views or my 3D here they are. So here you go, folks. Single left click on the view, drag and drop on the sheet. There's your view. Double click on the view, it's now a viewport. I could get in and, and rearrange the view. Um, you know, I could change it from consistent colors to shaded or however I like. So 
placing views on sheets is as quick as dragging and dropping. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at a walkthrough. Uh, this is also another really cool tool. So I've went ahead and created a walkthrough. And what we'll do, this will just take a moment. So here's an example of a walkthrough. And now this walkthrough can be, you know, downloaded and sent out to a customer, to, you know, uh, fellow architects, um, you know, to a project owner, you know, anywhere. So this will just run for another, another two, three seconds. And you could create this basically on a plan view. And again, the resolution and the graphics in Revit, pretty darn good. All right, so we'll quit out of that. Uh, let's see. So we're going to talk about importing uh, CAD um, and exporting DWGs and linking uh, PDFs. So these are really neat things. Um, importing a CAD file. So let's go up here to the Insert tab. And for CAD, you can import as, you know, it basically comes in as an object, or I can link it, which basically maintains an open link. So if the CAD file changes and you reload that link, you get the updated CAD file. So I'm going to click link CAD. And I'm going to look through, I get this dialog box, and I'm going to come to, let's see. Look at all those CADs I could link. So I'm going to just link this file. So when I select it, you could see it shows up in the thumbnail. And I want to link this to, actually, I don't want to link it to my current view. Let me set myself up here a little bit. Um, uh, let's see. Let me open up. Let me open up a template rather than link it into this file. So I'm going to open up a new template. Now, say in this case, I'm starting from scratch with this new template. And first thing I want to do is uh, bring in this CAD file. So here I've got my CAD file. Over here, I'm going to select current view. So this linked file, it's a floor one view, uh, is going to come into this floor one floor plan. Uh, I could change colors. I can make it black and white. It'll bring in all the layers or just selected layers. It'll position it to a couple of different options. I'm just going to go with uh, internal origin here. And it auto detects your units. So that's pretty nice open it, and here it is. So there's your linked file. So as an example, I could link this file. Now this one I brought in with color so I could see my layers, or I could bring it in black and white. Uh, and then I could use these walls to snap Revit walls right onto this linked file. Um, you know, I could <laughs> place Revit um, fixtures right over these. Uh, doors and such. Uh, I could place my grids and snap right to these uh, AutoCAD grids. Uh, I could snap Revit grids right to that and start a Revit project from this linked file. All right. Um, so that's bringing in a link. With AutoCAD, you can explode your link, or you cannot explode a link, actually, excuse me. Um, but if you wanted to bring in an AutoCAD detail, you could bring in details, you could bring in AutoCAD hatch patterns, um, and you could bring them in as an import if it's details. Um, what happens is if you explode that, all those fragmented pieces of line work become Revit fragmented pieces of line work all over the file, and it bulks up the file in a, in a pretty uh, destructive way. Um, and it can also cause uh, corruption. So not highly recommended, but if you do bring it into its own 
individual template, like a detail drawing and explode it. And then you could uh, put Revit line work right on top of it or not even explode it, just put Revit line work right on top of your CAD drawing. There's a whole process to it, okay? But it can be done. Um, all right, let's see. So that's importing CAD. Uh, let's look at exporting uh, a DWG. This is kind of fun. Um, so I am going to come back to this drawing. Uh, so I'm gonna open up this, uh, this sheet and I wanna export this to CAD. I've got a CAD user, they want the file. Uh, this particular drawing, I've got um, a couple of elevations, I've got a section and some detail views. So I'm gonna come over to a file export. And here you could see, I could export it as a 3D uh, IFC file. I could uh, export it as a DWF, uh, CAD formats. I could export it as DXF if I like, uh, a DGN if I like, or a DWG, which we'll choose here. So I'll select DWG. It gives me some options, basically showing me in the thumbnail. I want to just export this, uh, my current view, and this particular sheet. What it's going to do is it's going to export each one of these little details as a separate, um, separate CAD file. Uh, and there's a setup in here too. I'm not going to go through all the setup, but there's a, a bit of setup. Uh, so this one right here, I just selected all the views and sheets in the set. Um, and this one, I'm just going to do the, the current sheet. And then it's going to ask me where I want it to go. So you can see I've done this earlier. Um, basically, here it is, uh, this particular one. I could just say right here, call it project one and save it to that location. And if I go to open up that file, I'll open a project. So if I go back, I saved it in my webinar folder. Oh, that's not it. Yeah, that was it. Uh, it's not doing that. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, it's, well, let me just, show, I just want to show you guys this. Let me go to here. Be easier to show you right from here. It's not going to open it because it's a, it's a it's a CAD file, but I just wanted to show you that it did make it in here. So here are all my uh, CAD files. And so let's see, where is that? Anyway, you could see here, I've got the, the individual sections here, um, individual details. Here's the entire sheet. It's a, it's a DWG, so I'd have to open it in AutoCAD, but basically it created that for us. Kind of neat. Uh, so that's exporting. Once again, you could export it as DWF as well. And what I wanted to show you guys was, uh, and gals out there as well, um, linking a PDF. So this is something that we're using a lot more, PDFs. Uh, let's link in a PDF. So again, I'm gonna go to a blank template. I'll go to new uh, project. I'll just pick this construction template. I'm gonna come up to my insert and I could link or import. So I'm gonna just click on link PDF and I've got a file right here. Here are my PDFs. I'll pick on this guy. I think it may have some uh, markups on it. Okay, so now it's gonna give me another dialog box of which views that I wanna uh, pull in and the quality. So 300's pretty good. 600's not much different than 300 actually. Uh, 150 will also work. 300's, 300's a DPI is a pretty good um, 
uh, quality to, to bring this guy in. Uh, and without making it too dense. All right, so it's thinking and there it is. So there's our PDF. I'm just gonna place it right here. And I'm gonna zoom in and you could see pretty good raster quality, right? Um, I mean, pretty good vector quality, not quite, uh, these don't look like raster lines. I mean, that looks, that's kind of rasterized right there. But um, some of these lines, you know, pretty good quality to snap to. So now I brought this in. Um, the other thing you would want to do is scale it. So I'm going to come to my best uh, visibility of a scale, whether it's a dimension or a scale on the drawing. And I'm going to select the drawing. I just left clicked on it. And what I get here is enable snaps. That'll enable me to snap uh, to this drawing. And then after I do that, I'm going to click on my scale. And I'm going to select graphical. So there's my snap. So I am just going to go from, and this one I already scaled, but this would be the process of scaling. So it's showing up as 16. Oh, there you go. So it was just showing up as 16 feet and one 128th. So there's, you know, scaling it. One 128th, that's, that's pretty tight. Um, with that, if I type units, UN, project units, I could come in here and like if I wanted to change that uh, to the nearest 32nd, I could change my units pretty easily to say half inch, quarter inch, eighth inch, or whatever I'd choose. And, you know, different disciplines. Uh, and it also in length, I've got, um, you know, metric, I've got um, in feet, uh, meters, um, you know, US survey feet, things of that nature. Uh, just thought I'd show you units. So basically now I brought in this PDF and I scaled it. And let's see, uh, let's see what some of these look like. So eight foot, you could see just below that. So I'd say that scale was, was reasonable enough. Um, so that's bringing in um, a PDF. And once again, I invite you all to watch this video. I've gone through a lot of information and fairly quickly, um, this my excitement about showing off all this really cool stuff. Uh, I just wanted everybody to, to see what um, Revit can do and what Revit has for us. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the, you know, that's the slide, SeanSolutions.com. I can be reached at vstomato at topconsolutions.com if you have any questions directly for me. And um, yeah, thanks.